Hello and welcome back to another episode of Divinity Original Sins 2, the Definitive Edition. This is the Honor Mode, my name is Saiken and we're playing on the hardest difficulty with a little twist. We're increasing the enemy difficulty level to match our level plus two, which means every enemy is as strong as a boss. Great, cool. So a little bit of a, a recap from on the last video. I promised you to give an answer about how to douse the flame on the historian. Most of you probably either by now knew it or would have uh, put it into the comment. Uh, I, we did everything correct with one short exception. You had to use uh, blood in order to douse the flame, so raining blood would work, uh, uh, teleporting up there with, with flesh sacrifice or simply teleporting the historian into blood would work as well. So that douses him, afterwards you still had to bless him, he then tells you everything about it, opens a portal and you can get kind of the master key. Nothing uh, spectacular, specifically if you have played the game already, something that is more spectacular are those uh, three uh, three uh, casters here, three necromancers to be precise, and to set the stage a bit here, we do have uh, the soul jars of those three souls. Uh, Necromancer times here, which is uh, this soul jar here. The soul jar stands on its. You see your vision, the scene. You feel a jolt and open your eyes. A human spirit. There you go. Oops, we wanted to fight them. Eh, we're not going to just smash uh, the soldiers. I never did it in advance, I always did it when they were dead. We still want to fight them because it's a good fight. So, let me present to you the fight against two of those guys. <laughs> because I just prepared that in advance. Uh, well, you can do the easy route and simply kill them, but that won't yield you any experience. The more fun route is to uh, prepare everything with water here and we're going to talk to them afterwards once we have killed them we're going to uh, destroy the cannabic jars because those are what keeps uh, them alive i put two of the characters up here and as soon as you move a bit closer Shit is going to hit the fan. Yeah, yep, and yes, good. There we go, everyone's in combat now. Lois is the first one to act, and I would say a good way to start the battle is cluster them up. Back here looks like a decent spot. Great. And we're going to put a totem on the floor. There we go. Let's move as far as we can for two. They do have, of course, incredible amounts of magical armor. But we're going to get them down. No worries. They're trying to take the high ground. Always. So you've got to teleport them uh, down. Over and over and over again. Bam. Both of them are there. Great. That is a bit more of a problem, the soulbound nature. Uh, oh no, that was just a zombie. I thought he was using shackles. You can simply mildly ignore the zombies, they have no magical defense, uh, thus, they can easily be controlled. So, in terms of making sure that everyone stays alive. 
Let's give back some of the armor. Okay. And secondly, I would like to propose that you two are changing your position. Why can't we reach him? Let's try it from up here. Is he just barely out of range? Oh no, he's fortified. My bad. That was stupid. We can't teleport him. But what we can do is we can teleport those two. That way, when we're now dealing with AoE attacks, both of them are being hit at the same time. Good, Ethan. Controls the zombie. And let's move over to here. Let's see, knocks him down. Essentially wasting a turn. Good. Necromancer G Wick is the one that we need to deal with first. The other one can be controlled. This guy here is a pain in the rear. Let's take away his physical armor. And in order to not be a target for him next turn, I'll just make Saiken invisible. Good, physical armor is almost down. Now we finally got his physical armor down. He's going to get an, a turn if we're not knocking him down, so knockdown arrow. Moving all the way over to here. Healing this guy so that he takes damage, and I'd like to knock down the other one. Okay, so we simply heal up. Let's drink a potion. And we can deal with those two relatively soon. Another knockdown. And let's focus on the Necromancer. He still counts as fortified, so can't really deal with him. Moving to here, hasting ourselves. And giving ourselves some more armor. Next turn, we're going to have six points. Five now.
So this here takes care of the first necromancer, by the way, a zombie died. It's pretty much like with a sector in XCOM. Once you kill the host, the zombie also dies. Good, and now it's just a matter of cleaning up. I just realized, by the way, if you were to simply let them resurrect, you probably could get an infinite, infinite loop of experience out of them. Because they would always resurrect and be um, upgraded to two levels above you. Chickening this guy. And now in terms of dealing damage to him. This almost took all of his um, magical armor away, but I think we're going to kill him before that even. Wow, high ground Sibyl hits for 250. That's a lot. Good. Now that they are done, down, we're going to deal with Rask soldier. And we're trying to uh, we're dealing with the G Wake soldier. Good. If you do it after you defeated them, you can see you're also getting experience on top of it. And that's pretty much the only thing that was difficult in here. They have the key. And the rest of the place is almost just to loot. If I remember correctly, there hadn't been any other... F oh, wait, there had been one fight. I am misspeaking. It's been a very long time since I've played this dungeon here. Um, there is actually a pretty interesting fight at the end of the dungeon. Let me just go through it because all of this here uh, doesn't need a guide uh, to do it. It's essentially looting everything and then moving on forward. And uh, We resume the video once we're going through this uh, door here because that's going to prompt another interesting fight. Stay tuned. All right, uh, once you are through uh, the entirety of the dungeon, make sure that your main character is touching the relic. That way the barrier will go down for your info. Uh, got to, Essentially got to stand on uh, this uh, little com uh, uh, compartion here and then go through that area in order to reach a hidden area back here for some extra loot. There is another area over here. The well remains as and I think it was possible uh, to a use water on it and then you can grant a wish there you go So we're willing to pay a fare and be generous and as a reward we received 
an item which is probably not level. Oh yeah, it is level. Well, it's actually a pretty decent item. Wits, Hydro, Huntsman, and plus two summoning. Damn, oh, that's a pretty decent ring. I think we're going to replace the uh, Error of Thurk uh, one for now, making the summonings even stronger. Yep, that was a pretty good reward. So, the well is now, you see, that we love you. And let's pay another fare. Every single character can do that. So Lose's reward was pretty decent belt actually. Which trumps our current belt. Bit of a belt switcher redo going on. The well is now filled, you see. We love you for we never more the fair So we're definitely willing to pay a fare and another ring. This time for Sibyl. Warfare Scoundrel and two resists. That's a nice little ring. Specifically, like the two resists. Good, and finally, Ebon. And we receive Tuck of War. That's a nice little belt as well. There we go. Upgraded leadership even a bit further. We haven't skilled anything in leadership, but we got a few items. So everyone profits from that. Good. Let's move on. To our last fight in this dungeon here. Okay. The fight can be difficult. If I remember it correctly, there was a lot of burst potential within these enemies. So specifically when they're leveled up, I want to be careful. So as always, we're preparing at the area. Good. The ground is prepared. Time for summoning. So I prepared all of this here. Time for summoning. And then we can give it a go. I think... I don't remember the exact details of the fight. It's been... Almost two years now. But what I do remember is once we're putting our hands on the sarcophagus, things are starting to go downhill. I think we need to upgrade our strength. Too heavy. Okay. Didn't expect that. So let's see if we have a strength elixir. Let me figure out a way to raise his strength. 
All right, I think I found a way. So we're going to go in. We, I crafted a potion, minor strength potion. We're going to upgrade our strength with that. And that should be enough. No, still not enough. Got another amulet that gives plus one. Are you kidding me? 16 strength and it's too heavy. Yeah, that's the disadvantage of not having a character who is strength based in the group. That's a shame. So two options if you are in that exact same situation. You can either, if you have the reskill mod, uh, reskill or craft higher potions. I mean, at the end of the day, encouraged gives plus two st uh, strength. Um, 16 is obviously not enough. Maybe a 17 upwards can move it. Let me really quickly do the reskilling because I want to show you the combat. Okay, just a short update. Overall, it was 18 strengths that was required and I didn't need to reskill. I just, uh, I'll show you again how I did it. It's repeatable, even without crafting a minor strength potion. So, Let's prepare for the combat, that's why we're pre-summoning. So we're starting with peace of mind. Basically increasing the uh, strength by three. Great. Then we're going to use the human ability further encourage ourselves. We use the bed roll or three of them stack. And with 19 strengths, you can loot the hands of the tyrant. And I thought that that would trigger a fight, but I am apparently wrong again. I was truly under the impression that uh, we would fight a few, a couple of monsters. Anyways, even though we didn't do it, Typical problem uh, that can arise uh, from not having enough stats available happened here. So I showed you how to circumvent it. And with that, you would have the full set of Bacchus Rex. It's a pretty decent set. We're not going to use it because for us um, it has really no value at the moment. It's not leveled up enough. We already have better gear. Let's look at what Excel, uh, exactly we're going to do next. Since this dungeon here is done, I'm going to leave. We already got the good items. And if you look at the map, uh, we really cleared most of it. There's one more area down here, which is going to be our next target. So two more fights uh, there. Actually two difficult ones, so that's going to be fun. And then we're going to go for the final battle, which would conclude act number one. Thank you as always for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment or a like down below if, I've, um, if I forgot to explain anything important uh, of the labyrinth, feel free to correct it and let everyone know. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.